One of the properties of seas that was very recently discovered is related in a verse of the Quran as follows. He has let loose the two seas, converging together, with a barrier between them they do not break through. This property of the seas that converge together yet do not mingle with one another at all has been very recently discovered by oceanographers. Because of a physical force called the surface tension, the waters of neighboring seas do not mix. Caused by the difference in the density of the seas, surface tension prevents the seas from mingling with one another, just as if a thin wall were between them. It is yet another scientific miracle of the Qur'an that during a period when people had no knowledge of physics, surface tension, or oceanography, this was revealed in the Qur'an. An information provided in the Qur'an about rain is that it is sent down to earth in measured amounts. This is mentioned in Surat Az-Zukruf as follows. It is he who sends down water in measured amounts from the sky by which we bring a dead land back to life. That is how you too will be raised from the dead. This measured quantity in rain has again been discovered by modern research. It is estimated that in one second, approximately 16 million tons of water evaporates from the earth. This figure amounts to 505 trillion tons of water in one year. This number is equal to the amount of rain that falls on the earth in a year. Therefore, water continuously circulates in a balanced cycle according to a measure. Life on earth depends on this water cycle. Even if all the available technology in the world were to be employed for this purpose, this cycle could not be reproduced artificially. Even a minor deviation in this equilibrium would soon give rise to a major ecological imbalance that would bring about the end of life on Earth. Yet, it never happens and rain continues to fall every year in exactly the same measure, just as revealed in the Quran. The proportion of rain does not merely apply to its quantity, but also to the speed of the falling raindrops. The speed of raindrops, regardless of their size, does not exceed a certain limit. Philip Leonard, a German physicist who received the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1905, found that the fall speed increased with drop diameter until a size of 4.5 millimeters, or 0.18 inches. For larger drops, however, the fall speed did not increase beyond 8 meters per second, or 26 feet per second. He attributed this to the changes in drop shape caused by the airflow as the drop size increased. The change in shape thus increased the air resistance of the drop and slowed its fall rate. As can be seen, the Quran may also be drawing our attention to the subtle adjustment in rain which could not have been known 1400 years ago. The star Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky.
Astronomers have calculated its distance from us at being 8.5 light years. It was noted only in very recent times, thanks to modern telescopes, that Sirius moves together with another star, much smaller than itself and invisible to the naked eye. Scientists call this two-star system Sirius A and Sirius B. The larger of these is Sirius A, which is the brightest star that can be seen with the naked eye. Its mass is three times that of the Sun, and it is ten times brighter than it. Sirius B, on the other hand, is a white dwarf star. It cannot be seen with the naked eye. It possesses approximately the same mass as the Sun, although since its diameter is only four times that of the Earth, it is very much more dense. The stars in the Sirius system are heading towards our direction at thousands of kilometers an hour. The duration of the rising of Sirius on Earth's horizon is exactly the same as our solar year. In other words, 365 days and 6 hours. Because they had discovered this interesting common feature in the star Sirius and the solar system, the ancient Egyptians declared the day when Sirius first appeared on the horizon to be the first day of their calendar year. Because of such characteristics, the star Sirius became a focus of interest for a great many ancient civilizations. It was believed that this star possessed various powers, and some people even went to such excesses in their depravity as to worship it. The fact is, though, that it is God, the Lord of the worlds, who created the star Sirius and all the features it possesses, just as he did everything else. God refers to Sirius, known as Shira in Arabic, in verse 49 of Surat an Najim of the Quran. It is He who is the Lord of Sirius. The Sirius double stars orbit in ellipses around one another. The orbital period of Sirius A and B about their common center of gravity is 49.9 years. This scientific data is today accepted with one accord by the departments of astronomy at Harvard, Ottawa and Leicester universities. This information is reported as followed in various sources. Sirius, the brightest star, is actually a twin star. Its orbit lasts 49.9 years. As is known, the star Sirius A and Sirius B orbit each other in a double bow every 49.9 years. The point requiring attention here is the double, bow-shaped orbit of the two stars around one another. We've seen that the star Sirius is referred to in Surat An-Najim, verse 49. We also encounter a very wise analogy in verse 9 of the same Surah. He was two bow lengths away or even closer. As we have seen this far, the star Sirius is referred to in verse 49 of the Surah. And verse 9 of the same Surah contains the expression, two bow lengths, to refer to the two stars' orbits. When we combine the numbers of these two verses, in other words 49 and 9, we obtain the number 49.9, the duration in years of these stars' orbits. Here we are faced with a mathematical miracle of the Quran. Given the technological means available 1400 years ago, it was of course impossible for people living then to know that the star Sirius, one of which is too small to be seen with the naked eye, 
was actually a two-star system, that both these stars' orbits were in the form of a bow, and that those orbits lasted for 49.9 years. Scientists only came by that information towards the end of the 20th century. Yet our Almighty Lord, the Creator of everything from nothing, the Absolute Ruler, has miraculously revealed these facts in the Quran. And God knows best. This scientific fact that nobody could have known at the time of the revelation of the Quran once again proves that the Quran is the word of Almighty God.